Hello, my name is Anna Marciniak of One Horse Life and I invite you for my podcast and video training about open frame on long reins. Here you can see on this material my young horse Cordy Lane and you can see uh, we will be changing frames on long reins. What is important? What we are looking for? So I, in my training of RTRT, which stands for Residual Tensions Release uh, Therapy Training with the beat, I look for the moment that the horse is all the time steadily pressing in a weightless manner onto the beat. So when you see the uh, fragment of the long reins from the lunging girth to his mouth, you can see that it is kind of flexed, that he is really pressing, that there is some like real connection, contact. But when you look at the uh, part of the loose um, uh, reins that are between my hand and the lunging girth, you can see that they are very flexible. They are very, very light, full of air. And this is what we are looking for. So I am looking for the moment that we have this weightless kind of connection with the horse, yet the connection is very real. You can see that I am changing the frame from low frame to high frame, from the long frame to shortened frame. And the horse is maintaining all the time the same, now beautiful moment, the same manner of pushing onto the contact in a weightless manner, full of air. I call it that the frame is, um, frame is real, yet the frame is open. What does it mean open frame? In my training, uh, as I see it, the frame can be open and closed. And many times I see people riding horses in a closed frame. Closed frame can be a higher frame, lower frame, uh, long or short. It is closed when the horse is not uh, pushing um, in a very active manner onto the beat and he doesn't see that the frame is just imaginary. So he sees like the frame is closed, like there is no possibility to go beyond and like above the beat in the sense that there is no space in front of the beat for him, that he tries to be like on and behind the beat. I want the horse to be all the time like uh, feeling that the beat and the frame that he has is just illusion, that there is nothing that restricts him, there is nothing that uh, um, restrains, uh, restrains his movement, that he's using beat as a weightless support to be able to even further relax his whole skeletal muscle system. And now I am showing you some beats of our everyday training, and so you can see how I am changing positions, how I am changing frames, yet all the time the horse is open, the throat, throat latch is open, the nose is all the time in front or on the vertical. And what is important, there is none such a moment during the training that the horse goes empty, that the horse goes uh, behind the vertical. And especially if, when we switch the frame from high to low frame, uh, low position to high position of the head or high position to the low position of the head, that there is no such a moment that the horse goes like sunken, like he goes behind the vertical. Whenever I see that I lose such connection, I use our RTRT technique for releasing tensions because whenever the horse loses this kind of a connection with the beat with my hand, it means that he stopped trusting with the openness of the frame and he started to tense up on this, on this uh, connection, on this frame and uh, we have a problem. It means that he started to have tensions in his body. So our goal is to release all these tensions from his body so he can go independently of the position all the time in the same way. 
If you have such a situation that your horse goes like behind the vertical or low, down and low and trips or, or goes like sunken, he's uh, coming closed in front. Some people uh, call it uh, deep and round or low and deep. I don't like it. I don't train my horse like that. I want like the... Um, what we are aiming for, what you can see here when the horse is educated and he knows uh, how to relax on the beat, I want him to be all the time in front of the vertical. I want him to be all the time very uh, consciously using the beat to deepen relaxation of his whole body, of the frame and all the muscles. And uh, whenever his uh, frame becomes closed and um, rounded and deep, so whenever he is becoming sunken, he is losing this sort of connection with the beat, and you try to fix it up with, by lifting the head uh, manually with the hand up, you are risking the following. You are risking that the horse will lift up temporarily the head, but will tense behind, will tense the back and the lumbar area and will stop working through the back. So you can see here the core delaying is all the time very actively stepping under the gravity under his body. He is very consciously pushing from behind. The shoulders are very light, very free. He has lovely action of the front legs, which is the effect of coming onto the beat. So he can relax the shoulders even more. He can like hang the shoulders on the moving body and because of that, like lift up the, sh uh, the, the shoulders and the withers up. That is the effect of working through the back and not using the head and neck as a balancing tool, as a balancing rod. So here uh, we are changing the position uh, in this video and we are all the time focusing on maintaining the frame open. So the horse all the time trusts that he has space in front and he can actively push in a weightless manner onto the beat. So here with me is today Zuza. Hello. And my working student from Poland. Zuza, do you have any questions about this material, what you saw during the training and now on this short uh, video? Yes, I was wondering what is happening in your body during the transitions. Mm -hmm. So very good question. Thank you, Zuza. During the transitions in between the frame, I am uh, in between frames, I am all the time focusing on maintaining a very steady and very light connection with the horse's mouth. So all the changes between the frames are happening as suggestions and they are not happening as uh, in the effect of uh, physical manipulations. So we are not changing the frames because I am lifting or loosening the contact, but because I am very gently suggesting just by the play of the net of the muscles in my hand, what is going to happen next. And when the horse is educated, he reads it, he feels it, and thanks to that, he can respond to that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, I was also wondering uh, when there is a good time to start this, of course, uh, assume, assuming that you are already doing RTRT. Uh, I feel that whenever you are able to achieve this weightless kind of connection with the mouth of your horse, that you experienced today a little <laughs> bit training on my uh, horse Vivian, uh, it's time to do that. Because um, whenever the horse has like fixed position, he can find relaxation. But working in a fixed position is not the essence of dressage. Dressage to me is all about changes and all about being free from restrictions. And this we see the best through transitions. And there are plenty transitions because we can do transitions between the gates. 
This is obvious. We can do transitions between slow and, and more working tempo. We can do transitions between a collection and working gait, but we can also do transitions between the frames. And I feel that we always have to start with a young horse from transitions, uh, two of them. One is between the frames, because this frees the horse from thinking and feeling that um, uh, any movement of the hand may restrict him. So it is very, very important to do this before we do exercises like asking for more bend or less bend or traverse, renverse, shoulder, shoulder in. Uh, when we uh, lengthen one side of the body of the horse and we relax more the other uh, part of the body of the horse because it is uh, connected with the changing of the frame. Uh, the horse is lengthening one side of the uh, body and he has to be able to follow your hand to do that. And the other one is, of course, changes between working and collected. So uh, shifts of balance. But we, it, it is the outcome of understanding the shifts, the changes between frames, because you are not able uh, to change the balance if the horse connects the movement, any little gesture, uh, from the beat with uh, becoming stiff, uh, stiff. So what I see that normally is happening is that people generally uh, assume that it is it is normal that the horse will tense a little bit during the transition, but we can do transition in such a way to hide it, and we can work it out later during the gate. In RTRT, we use transitions as opportunities to deepen relaxation of the horse. So after the transition, the horse is already more relaxed and the, and the gait is instantly better. So you could see here moments during the movement when we were changing the frame and the horse was instantly bettering his yes, movement. Yes, it was like that. Can you tell me why sometimes the horse goes really well in the higher frame, it's nicely on the contact, but when you try to, uh, to get the frame longer, the contact disappears and the horse goes behind the beat? Mm -hmm. Very good question, Zuza. Thank I you. really enjoy it. Changes of the frames are the test of the contact. So whenever you change the frame and you lose contact, you lose your steady yet weightless connection, you lose ability to really feel the whole body of the horse on your hand and you lose this sensation that the muscles on your hand are really played by the horse's muscles uh, through the beat like uh, strings on the harp. Uh, then you know that there was no contact. That simply in the higher frame, you uh, were holding the horse and the horse maybe through very good training learned to compensate, uh, compensate it, to still go, even if the frame was, uh, even if the contact was not proper, even if you were holding. And whenever you were giving him space, he showed you, I don't see any space. Look, whenever you drop, I drop also. And this is the moment that shows that there was no contact, that there was just holding. So if you write and you want to lengthen the frame or shorten or change the flexion or go from the, from the high frame to low frame especially, and you lose contact, your horse goes behind the vertical, your horse shuts uh, in front, uh, becomes empty on the beat, it means there was no proper connection, the back was not working properly. Even if your horse still looks okay, it was not correct work. And fortunately, unfortunately, now we have very good horses that because of their fantastic pedigree, they can hide many our mistakes. But always changes of the frames are the test of contact. Yes, yeah, so uh, as you can see on this video, I have all that time the same contact. And this is the measurement of the contact. Only then we can advance. This is the test of the contact. Therefore, I like to do with young horses, as many changes of the frame as possible to see if the horse sees the f any frame as open frame, 
as the frame that is relaxing him and encouraging his whole body to work forward and relaxed as opposed to closed frame that is keeping him. And if you have very good horse, he will learn how to compensate in, in his body, not, not to show it that much. But then whenever you will change the frame, the horse will be coming off the outside rein and will be coming behind the vertical, will be coming, will be coming empty. Some people call it deep and low. Uh, they try, uh, but 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 uh, I. Uh, uh, this is not our training goal that the horse goes like that. Mm -hmm. This should not be our training goal. Our training goal is that all the time, the frame is open, in the sense of that the horse doesn't see the beat as restriction, and in the sense that. Uh, uh, literally, the frame of the horse is open. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if it if it's not working and we are losing the contact, we need to go back to basics. Always, go always. To previous steps. Yes, it means that what you thought is connection was not connection. That you were holding back the horse, and your horse learned to compensate. And this is amazing to see how much they can compensate, and how much they are willing to change something in their bodies to still go to please us. Therefore, I like to work usually uh, without the beat. Uh, sorry, without the whip, uh, to see if the horse is really going on the onto the contact, and that. Uh, we are not pushing him when he's tensed. So when you are not a professional, when you are not very much relaxed, it's good to look for a horse who is not so uh, expensive and so, you know, wonderful mover. I think that uh, we have to think what are our goals. Because if you are ambitious rider as yourself, Yes, I would say you you are my student and I can tell you, Zuza, dedicate the next 10 years of your life or maybe 15 to learning. Yes, uh, and then it's very good to get a regular horse. <laughs> the horse that will yes. not hide your mistakes with his pedigree. Because these horses teach us the most. Because when you do things correctly, they move like magic. When you don't do things correctly, there is nothing that will hide your mistakes. The horse will look like a shit. And, <laughs> and we need that to learn. If your goal, however, is to just have nice time and enjoy and you don't care to become professional, it's absolutely okay to buy great pedigree horse and just enjoy their beauty. Uh, then you have simply different goals. But if you think about yourself as about a professional or you aim to become professional, I think there is no biggest value than the one coming from working with so-called regular horses that can change into flying birds, unicorns, thanks to good techniques, proper riding, and that can show you immediately if you are on the right path or not. Because these horses, they have usually a little bit lower flexibility and a little bit lower uh, stand by relaxation point than the great pedigree horses, so they will uh, compensate less. They are able to compensate less. Mm -hmm. So you cannot uh, go as many of the professional uh, Grand Prix tr um, teachers, trainers go like, let's buy this spectacular horse and hope that we can have very good horse at the end of the training. Because you start with good horse. So if you continue a training that degrades your horse, that tenses him, you will end up with below ever rich horse. But if your training adds to the horse, if the horse becomes better thanks to the training, you will end up with amazing horse, mm -hmm. starting from the good horse. And then once you have tasted the difference, you know, with the horse coming onto the beat, how it feels, you can handle and you can squeeze the beauty and 
uh, amazingness of all these great pedigree horses. And let's face it, they want it. They, this is their purpose. They know that they are brilliant and they want to shine. They don't want to be ridden, however. They suffer. They want to shine. They want uh, songs to be sung about them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A wonderful answer. Thank you very much. Uh, why, in your eyes, is it important to have guidance during learning that? Guidance, you mean like teacher? Yes, like a mm -hmm. teacher. <laughs> when, I've, when a person is learning. Um, uh, it's very important to have guidance because uh, as humans, generally, unless you have very spectacular relaxation of your own body, uh, it's very difficult to be able to go through this process without adding tensions to the horse. Because we like to grab things, we like to hold, we like to restrict. And to learn how to open the frame is not about letting go. It's not about like half open hand. It's not about uh, not holding the reins. You can have uh, open hand and still the frame will be closed. Because the horse will not trust that there is space behind, uh, like, like in front of the bead, that the frame is just illusionary. During this video, you could see many times that, the cor uh, that my horse was uh, going on the bead and the bead was just like opportunity for him to relax deep and, and he was mentally... Uh, in front of the beat. He was mentally working, um, uh, like moving and working in front of the beat. This is very important that the horse all the time feels that there is space uh, uh, in front of the beat. It doesn't mean that he goes in front or above the beat, but that the frame is illusionary that he thinks and relaxes to the front all the time. So he's all the time on the beat, that there are no empty moments. And we as humans, we think that, okay, I will keep reins lightly. It equals open frame. It, it does not. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and to achieve it, we need guidance. <laughs> yes. And who will benefit the most from uh, RTRT? I think that anyone who seeks truly relaxed horse, I feel that uh, it's time that in our horsemanship, generally, we stop looking for um, differences. Like I am working on the halter, I am working on the beat, I am doing dressage, I am doing jumping or uh, western. But we look for things that we want to be remembered for. Like what, what our era, what our um, century has to offer the future generations. Because it's crazy that you can see that 200 years passed and sometimes it feels like no one sees old masters uh, thought of anything beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think that it's time to step up and to continue the tradition of old masters, adding to the horsemanship new things that make things better. Mm, wonderful. <clears throat> How can you know that you are ready to learn this? If you feel the, if you feel the pull, mm -hmm. it means that you are ready. Yes, it's, if you feel like, oh, it's, uh, it looks interesting, it is uh, interesting, it means that you are ready to do that. Uh, if you don't feel such a pull, it means maybe that it's not your piece of cake. Um, assuming that you want that, how can you prepare better to learn from you? Uh, the best way to learn from me is to really um, want to learn from me. So it sounds uh, crazy, but... Uh, there are many offerings now uh, in the internet, on the internet, and I know that it's very tempting to buy things just to look at them. But when we look just to see, we are not able to profit from something. So, of course, it's good to be open and it's good to not do things that doesn't uh, feel good to you or your horse. 
But if you spend enough time observing from afar, reading Facebook posts, looking at the videos, and you feel this pull, then sign up with the attitude, I want to really le learn it. And then use me. <laughs> use my time, ask questions, show me your videos, and I will do my best to deliver. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Okay, thank you, Zuzah.